Hi, my sacred friends. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday. God morning. Um, I'm feeling a little weird today. It's a little nause nausea and like a little bit of a tension headache and um, really dehydrated. I feel super, super dehydrated. So I'm drinking, mm, cheers, a lot of water today. Um, I think it might be allergies. I don't think it's anything too serious. Um, I'm not used to feeling off. So when I do, my body goes a little wackadoodle. But um, yeah, I have a word for you guys today because he's lavishing his love on us this morning. Like even though I feel off and even though I feel slightly nauseated, um, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the Holy Spirit around me today. And um, I want to talk about faith. I want to talk about what faith really is. I know I always say it's forwarding all issues to heaven, and that is absolutely true. But I want to sort of dig deeper into what faith really is and explore it with you guys because I don't always have the answers, but I just... Uh, was listening to um, a sermon this morning and the pastor was talking about a, a C.S. Lewis story. I think it's in Pure Christianity where um, he says, you know, when we first become Christians, we can tell that there's something going on like in our house. We can feel that God is like ripping out the pipes and he's, you know, he's, he's, um, uh, um, restoring the home. He's pulling out the pipes and he's, um, you know, pulling up the wooden floors and, or whatever kind of floor. I wouldn't pull up my wooden floors. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but he's pulling up the floors and he's pulling out the piping and he's redoing the roof. And you're like, okay, you know, I get it. Like this, this is going to be good. I get this. But then he starts knocking down walls and he starts blowing out the windows and he starts, you know, like, uh, you know, like breaking the foundation of the house, pulling it from underneath. And you're like, okay, whoa, what are you doing? This is not okay. You know, like we, I thought you were going to build me like a nice, decent little cottage, you know? But as the renovation continues and as more and more starts to happen, you see he's building courtyards and he's building, you know, these beautiful suites and he's building like these gorgeous, you know, windows and uh, beautiful landscaping. And you start to see the beauty in the destruction that was once just like destruction and then you wonder and you wonder why, why is he building all this beautiful, beautiful stuff in this, in this house? Why is he building so many rooms and why? And he's building a palace. Why? Because he plans on dwelling in it, guys. He plans on dwelling in this palace that he's creating inside of us. I just think that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And... You know, when we look into water, when we look into still waters, we can see our own faces, our own reflection in the still waters. And it's the same with our hearts, guys. Our hearts are reflected to God. He can see the reflection of our hearts. So he knows the work that needs to be done in our human hearts. Um, I hope I'm not showing too much skin today. <laughs> it's so hot here. I was like, I don't know if I should be wearing a tank top, but uh, yeah, it's summer's coming, so get used to the tank tops. Uh, but yeah, when, when, when God is doing the construction on our souls and hearts and minds, it's sort of like when we're looking into the water and we can see our own reflection. God sees the reflection of our hearts so clearly, guys. He knows what needs to be done. He knows the work 
that needs to be done. And, you know, some processes, some constructions are e easier than others and some take more time than others and that we shouldn't get patient, impatient because I know that sometimes I get impatient with myself. I'm like, I should be praying more consistently. I should be feeling his presence more often. I should be uh, helping the poor I sh more often. I should be, should be, should be, lash, lash, lash. <laughs> it's like never ending. And so somebody commented to me last night, please don't be so hard on yourself. And, you know, I know that's true. Like intellectually, I know that's true. But it's such an old tape that it's hard for me to let go of that tape. It's like I want to scratch it. I want to scratch the record and that song that keeps playing, that narrative that keeps playing in my mind. But in time in time and being patient with myself and I know God is building his palace inside of me so let me look at my holy notes here and see what else I have for you guys today Proverbs 16 3 commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established and that's what I was talking about last night when um, I was telling you guys how utterly grateful I am to be able to have this channel because I feel like he's establishing me. Um, what is it exactly that I just said? <laughs> As uh, commit your work to the Lord. So I know that, you know, I'm not, I don't think this means like go out and be a mission missionary or become a pastor. I think it just means whatever you're doing, commit it to the Lord in everything that you do, do it for Jesus. And that's why this channel is so fulfilling for me because I get to just make my vocation my vacation and that is loving Jesus. I want to love Jesus. I want that to be my vocation. Loving Jesus and, and loving people to the cross. What more could I personally ask for in my life? Nothing, nothing. There's nothing more I could ask for. So hallelujah and amen to that. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Corinthians 2, 5, 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. And um, when I think about that for me, I just think my my initial instinct whenever I get into fight or flight, whenever I get afraid, is to try and control it myself, is to try and grab the reins and try and figure it out intellectually in my mind. And I'm like laying in bed at night like a rotisserie chicken, you know, going back and forth and thinking about things. I'm just going round and round and round and, you know, that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It's such a waste of time and energy. So my, uh, my prayer for, for myself and for you guys is that we would stop being like rotisserie chickens, you know, rolling around and start taking it to the cross right away. First thing, first instinct is to go to Jesus. First instinct is to go to God. First instinct is to say, God, you've got this handled. God, you know the outcome. God, I trust you. God, I love you. You know how much fear I'm in right now. God, you know how panicked I am right now. You know that I feel like I want to be in the driver's seat right now and I want to take control of this and handle it because I want the outcome to be what I want the outcome to be. I want things to turn out the way China wants them to work out. So God, I cannot lean on my own understanding. I give it to you. I give it 100,000% to Jesus. I give it to your holy, holy counsel. 
You know, there's a reason why he's called the great counselor. It's because Jesus is the solution to everything. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Jesus is the solution to absolutely everything. And some people might say, oh, well, you know, I don't know about that. For real. For reals, guys. Jesus is the solution to absolutely everything. We can trust him. We have to drink his blood and eat his flesh. And we've got to trust in him. We need to survive on Jesus. He's our survival kit. He's our first aid kit. Go straight to Jesus. Talk to him unceasingly. Conversation, dialogue all day long with him. Talking to him. Yes, that's the answer. That is totally the answer. Um, and he is lavishing his love on us today, guys. Do you feel it? Do you feel him lavishing his love on you today? If you don't feel it, comment down below so that we can pray for you. Um, the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Multiply our faith. Father God, help us remember that we can't walk on water if we don't get out of the boat. we got to get out of the boat today, guys. Get out of our comfort zones with Jesus. Stretch our faith. Trust him even just 1% more today. 1%. 1%. Can we do that? Can we give him that extra 1% today? I can, and I'm going to. I know, I know that trusting in an invisible God, you know, the Bible says that we can't see God really. I know people have had visions and that's amazing. But like on a daily basis, we can see the evidence of God all around us, but we can't really like see God. I mean, it happens, but for the most part, we're going on faith, you know, it's not blind faith, but we're going on faith. So it's, of course, challenging to give it to Jesus. It's a, it's a challenge and it's a test and, and it turns out to be a testimony when we just say, today I'm giving him that 1% more of my heart, that 1% more of my mind. I'm going to submit to Jesus that 1% more than I did yesterday. Just 1% more than we did yesterday. So that's pretty much um, what I had on my um, heart today. And I think I'm just going to really take it easy today. I will check in with you guys later to let you know how I'm feeling. And, um, and, and lastly, I, I just want to say that, you know, when we, when we are in alignment with the Lord, when we are trusting in Jesus, when we are saying yes to prayer, when we are saying yes to being, you know, obedient and reading scripture and, you know, listening to the word, if it's on audio Bible, there's a treasure there, guys. There's a treasure that's, that's hidden inside of us. That's there. We are hidden in Christ Jesus. Have you heard that? You know, we're safe under his feathers. We are safe. We are hidden in Christ there's a treasure beyond any amount, any price. It is a priceless treasure. Hide in Christ today. Let him be your comfort. Let him be your joy. Amen.